All right, good afternoon, Dan. Long time no talk. Yeah, long long time since our Tesla earnings yesterday, which was an awesome video. It is out live now. If you guys have not had the opportunity to check that out, that is uh, pretty much what we said in, in Tesla earnings call yesterday of what the market was going to do. It, it it pretty much so far has followed to a T. So let's see how we do on uh, how we do with the these two juggernauts, Pinterest and Microsoft today. Yeah, so I know it was a busy, busy earnings afternoon. We kind of took a poll in one of our morning rooms and Pinterest and Microsoft were the two that people wanted to check out. Uh, there's also Google, AMD out there, a lot of Starbucks, lots of other earnings. We're gonna deep dive these two. First, we'll start with Pinterest. It is down 10% uh, after hours. If we jump over into their report, got a nice little PowerPoint presentation. And uh, I do notice that they have some great numbers year over year, but you can see this quarter over quarter. Uh, revenue is down quarter over quarter, uh, both US and international. Although year over year, again, it's up pretty good, but I wouldn't think that Pinterest is too seasonal. Maybe because people are looking up Christmas ideas and things like that in Q4 and then in Q1, you know, they're not. I'm, I'm not really sure. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so... so i was i was a little surprised uh in the just coming from the entertainment industry i know a lot of people that are planning events and things like that use pinterest so for for ideas and and how to plan things and stuff like that so i was actually a little little shocked that this quarter we were down in in new users for for pinterest uh for active users just because I would think that since we have a little bit of a reopening type style play in the fact that people are now starting to replan events and, and economies are starting to open up, businesses are opening up, Pinterest would be and notably has been a spot for people to to go and generate those ideas and use use Pinterest for those for those causes. So again, yeah, in, in the holiday season, we, we did see a little boost in Pinterest, which again, you you have family gatherings and you have events and things like that that you want to come up with cute little centerpieces for. But <laughs> but uh, the I, I would also assume the event industry is is big into it, and you haven't really seen the numbers play out. So unless just just the holidays are just a, a more massive cyclical industry for Pinterest, but I I can't really make a case for that. Yeah, yeah, especially on the revenue side. I mean, users international, you still had um, some decent growth and what's that, 19 million. Um, but in the US, I mean, flat for three quarters in a row. So that is a, a little concerning again, but I do like their year over year growth is still relatively strong. We know the biggest opportunity from a monetization standpoint is international and that's where they have the most users. So if a average res average revenue per user is something that they can really wrap ramp up internationally you can see how much lower that is than the us uh right now so i think if they're able to ramp up that international monetization that looks like a huge opportunity for pinterest right yeah and and, and maybe the us market jumped onto pinterest just early just being where where Pinterest is based, and and maybe we we've kind of came to a little plateau for the U.S., which is fine. I mean, again, if if the U.S. It market is kind of a flat, it's still growing a little bit, but the global the global market is definitely where you're going to want to see some kind of some kind of real jump. And quarter over quarter in in Q4, I mean, we've we've definitely come down a little bit as far as revenue from the average user in in the global markets so that that could be a little a, a little bit uh, eye-opening i guess is the best way to put it but we did have just i mean if you take out q4 i mean we're still growing from q1 q2 q3 of last year we'll take out q4 and we still have a nice little growth so maybe there's a little spike there again because of holidays or maybe they did something more international but so th that is down quarter over quarter but over a longer term period it's 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 still pretty much in line with the, the steady growth Yep. Yep. And then uh, their cost of revenue, I did see that that uh, did continue to rise. So they are having to spend uh, a little bit more money and uh, hopefully that's on uh, things that are going to grow that average revenue per user internationally. 
uh, but year over year a lot a lot of their trajectories uh, look pretty good and they also adjusted EBITDA so earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization uh, they are positive so that is still pretty cool so they're not losing money there um, so I'm pretty impressed with that uh, what do you think Pinterest does it looks like we're down 10% uh, right now after hours uh, is this a viable dip for you do you think and, and if you have enough time, I think these type of dips on these kind of bigger companies are definitely viable. Um, would you go all in on these at at opening tomorrow? I probably wouldn't. I, if I was looking to add to a position or maybe I don't own any Pinterest and I want to start to start to ramp up and, and start to look to buy. Yeah, I, I think you could start to nip at these. Again, the, the company is still growing. We did have a quarter last last uh, the last quarter that we had did have a little bit of an extra spike to it, and I, I think we're normalizing from that spike. So, I think a lot of the the selling has to do with some of the some of the the almost shock value from like, hey, we didn't do as good as last quarter. But if you're looking at the bigger picture and things, it's still a good company. It's still solid. Um, I am seeing on the charts on the daily chart. Uh, a couple days ago, there was a little bit of a pivot around 69.83, somewhere in that range. If we get an open below that tomorrow, I think we'll see a little bit more of a sell-off, and I'd be looking to to hold to buy maybe a little closer to like $62 or $63 range. Yeah, I did have some put sales that because of this run-up into earnings, I was able to close for pretty nice gains. And after hours, I did buy a handful of shares, not very much, but a handful Right at 70, uh, my next ad is going to be a little bit at 68 and then uh, probably about every $2 all the way down, uh, getting progressively bigger all the way down into uh, 60 or you know, pretty much right off the 200 because 200 is going to creep up. So I do think that it, it can continue to come lower. It almost looks like a little bit of a potential uh, double top on the weekly. But if you're acquiring small size up here, I can totally see why because we never know when it's going to just you know bounce and take off so you have to hit that top of the pyramid and it has to go lower to fill your other levels uh that's what i'm personally doing with pinterest and if i had pinterest long term uh, i probably got it you know down in the 30s uh maybe even the 20s i know some people with cost basis in the 20s i would just continue to hold i wouldn't really be worried about it Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if, if you have time on your side, it, it's it's not a bad place to look to to buy. There is definitely some upside to it. And I think long term, you'll be fine, especially if you're able to, to cost average down on these type of positions. All right, let's jump over to Microsoft, uh, Miss a.k.a. Mr. Softy. So one of the biggest companies in the world, huge run up uh, into earnings. I, I mean, I had a feeling that no matter how good Microsoft did, that they were going to gap down a little bit and we're only gapping to the 20. I mean, we were just here on April 8th, so less than three weeks ago, even though they did have a, a solid quarter, looks like they beat across the board. Uh, what were your thoughts on Microsoft? Yeah, the, the reports are, are solid. I mean, they're, they're good earnings. And like you said, and it's not it's not exclusive to Microsoft. It's it's across the board. When, anytime we've been seeing, especially lately, that these big, massive runs up into earnings unless you're absolutely going to destroy something and come out with a new product line it's the same thing with tesla that we, we covered yesterday y you tend to see that we we get the sell so people just lock in profits in uh, people are expecting a good quarter they got a good quarter and now if if there's a, some type of pullback then on, on that certain case we could see some kind of uh, maybe a bit lower levels to to buy so it is it is getting beat up after hours, we do have a nice little target, probably about 244, I think in a little bit slightly longer term, 245, somewhere in that range. Has a decent support. You have the 50 creeping up into that. So yeah, that, that's probably, I think, where we where we start to head to. And that would be the zone where I start maybe creating some kind of pyramid to, to look to get into Microsoft. But I mean, how long has Microsoft been around? Years and years and years. Do I think they're still going to continue to be around for years and years? Yes. Do we know what the product is? Absolutely. Do they make money? Looking at the earnings report, they're still they're still doing pretty well. So any of these companies, again, Microsoft would be one of them. If you don't own for the long term, these are certain 
events that happen in, in, a, in a cyclical cycle that you can take advantage of. And it's just, you don't want to buy at the top. So when when things come down, it, it becomes a little bit scary to purchase, but yeah, these are the type of companies. And I do think Microsoft maybe sees a little, a little bit more pullback just based on who I think is trapped right now in the trade. Yeah, I mean, look at this thing on the monthly. That is absolutely wild. We know it went sideways for a long, long period of time. And uh, again, we're just gapping down into the 20 moving average. I would think that into 246, like this prior uh, high over here, maybe 244, 245, like you were mentioning, you got the 50 EMA. Uh, obviously the 100, it has bounced off multiple times. So uh, if, it, if you did have some type of pyramid, maybe that looked like this on Microsoft, I wouldn't hate it. So again, you're buying a little bit here, maybe buy some more, your third and then your fourth level down here around the 200 if it gets down there. Um, but overall, I mean, revenue, $41.7 billion, increase of 19%. Operating income, 17 billion, an increase of 31%. These are huge, just astronomically high numbers, an extremely profitable business. Um, usually the law of large numbers like they don't grow that much when you're talking about numbers like these but microsoft definitely delivered it's just ran up into earnings yeah and you see you do see some of the bigger companies from the 90s the 2000s that were just big big companies that have fallen off i mean blackberry would be one of them so something these the type of companies that just really haven't kept up with the movement in technology you can't really say that with Microsoft. Uh, they are huge in the in the cloud industry, which is just hand over fist, a, a strong, strong industry to be in right now. They're, they're doing very, very well. They have lots of profits coming in from that. Um, so so it's they are keeping up with trends, with technology. They are probably still one of the leaders in that. So even just their their computers aside, they have other sources of revenue, which, which can generate almost subscription type uh, service revenue that, that would come into the company. So uh, again, they, they have multiple ways to make money. The strong company, the earnings were good and you're getting that gap down, which I honestly believe is, is just more people just locking profits in. And uh, uh, unless you're, you're coming out hitting grand slams every single quarter, which is almost nearly impossible, especially for companies this size, it, it, it's, it does create more, more viable opportunities on these types of dips. Yeah, the key things I was looking for was uh, their cloud. So you can see this first little box I drew, Microsoft Cloud end-to-end -end solutions, um, generating 17.7 .7 billion in commercial cloud revenue, up 33% year over year. That's pretty phenomenal. And then down here, uh, they're obviously a competitor for Amazon Web Services. Their version is Azure, and uh, that's 50% revenue growth in Azure. Uh, so really phenomenal numbers on the cloud side. And I was actually a little impressed with this uh, Microsoft Office. You know, you've been hearing about some of these hacks that have gone on, uh, exploiting you know, emails from uh, Microsoft Office, uh, but you're still seeing a growth of 22% there. And that seems pretty solid as well. Yep. yep. They, they still they still continue to grow. And, and again, a lot of, even though the, the cloud industry itself is not brand new, it's still very much developing. And there's a lot that can continue to grow from that, that even just that type of service that they're offering. Uh, we know Amazon has AWS, which is just massive and any, any industry in that space, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of right now. Yep. Very similar. So buy the dip everyone on Microsoft. If you're interested, obviously not financial advice, check with your financial advisor, or don't forget to check us out at reallifetrading.com. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day and we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to have lots of these earnings reports coming your way. Love it. See you guys later.